In this video, we're going to look at Smoky Red, the Red Peterbilt that, well, smokes a lot when it's cold. Going to be doing a lot of troubleshooting in this video. Customer thinks it might need injectors. Is that what it really needs? Well, we're going to be finding out by doing all sorts of different tests. Maybe it has something to do with this. Hey guys, it's Josh from Depth Tape Channel, and today we're working on a 6NZ, which is a C15, and it is hard starting when cold. Now it is warm, the customer drove it here this morning, so it's not super cold. It is cold outside, it's about 30 degrees. What's going on? Well, supposedly it's smoking. I did do a little quick cutout test, I'll do one again just to verify once it gets cold again. And number four cylinder seemed a little weak. Can't really tell if it's smoking that much because, folks, it's winter here. In fact, next week is Groundhog Day. And you can see it's kind of gray out. Speaking of Groundhog Day, which is an excellent movie, there's a scene in there where he says, it's gonna be cold, it's gonna be gray, and it's gonna last you the rest of your life. Let's get to troubleshooting this engine and see if we can figure out why it's hard starting and why it's smoking. So I always like to do a little walk around before we start, and first thing I notice is this. Not cat filters. Not causing the problem, but you know, just a pet peeve of mine. Let's check our oil. Always good to look at the oil. Looks pretty clean. It's not super dark. Got a little air leak there, but that's for the air system. What the heck? Is that ether? Why would you leave that in the engine compartment? Uh, oh, it's glass cleaner. Well, that's not what I was expecting, but shouldn't leave any pressurized containers in the engine compartment. So I'll put that in the cab. Looks like original turbo, it's still painted. Oil cooler has a reman number on it, so it's been replaced at least once. Doesn't look like it was done yesterday though. Looks like the oil dipstick plugs are still original because they're painted. If they're painted on top, it usually means they're original. Uh, yeah, that's not factory. Not sure why everyone seems to do that, but just leave them alone. The uh, coolant didn't look great, but it's not low doesn't have a lot of rust just kind of an off -cut. so it's not super cold but the coolant temp right now is about eh, a little over 100 degrees but it still seems like it's missing to me a little bit i would like to get it cold cold and see so i we'll have to let it sit but i want to do a few checks before we let it sit so the first one is we're going to measure the fuel pressure just to see what it's doing so If you can hear it, but it does sound like it has a little miss. A little bit of smoke. Not bad. Hard to tell with a gray sky. There is some smoke though. Let's let's do another quick cutout test, see if we can isolate that smoke, and then we'll check our overhead real quick while it cools down. Hard to tell, but yeah, it is smoking. All right, so like I said, I do cut out tests pretty quick. I do not do the manual one, or the automatic ones hardly ever. So let's do number one, which seemed to be fire and flame. So it's going about 205, we'll say. That one's going above two. That one's going above two. See, number four never hits two. Not much tone change either. That one's hitting two. Number six is also not, well, it did hit two. But as the engine warms up, it's gonna drop that fuel position, see? It's got a four. And it's going up to 1.9 also. But let's look at our smoke. It's just not smoking very much now, which is what my fear was. And we're not very warm, we're about 125, 129. Full attempt. Um, we need to let the engine cool down, so we're gonna shut it down right now. Uh, I'm still gonna pull that number, there, the middle valve cover. Just four seems weak to me. So I did wash it off. It doesn't, it looks kind of dusty, but it's mostly just the paints come off. But we're gonna pull this middle valve cover and just take a look at it while the engine cools down so we can really troubleshoot and isolate those cylinders. So we're just gonna, like I said, pull this middle valve cover. That's over cylinder three and four. And I tried taking these bolts out with my Milwaukee right angle there, but I don't think they were ever tightened. I just believe that the dissimilar metals between the bolt and the aluminum valve cover base, they were kind of 
we'll just say chemistry welding themselves together. Luckily, it did call, all come out without damaging the threads or anything, but kind of a pain. Lucky it's not five or six, because we would have that air intake tube in the way. Now, what are we looking for here? Really anything. Valve train problems, broken injector spring, anything weird. So, once we get it off, let's take a look. Looking at her cam, don't see any damage there. That looks pretty good. Quite a bit of build up on our injector, but nothing uh, damaging from what I can see. Need to look at the spring, which is hard to do where we're at right now. So let's look at that closer from the other side, I think. So we're about four hours later, worked on something else, had lunch, and our engine is still warm to the touch, but it's obviously gonna be a lot colder than it was. Remember, we were about 129 degrees. Coolant temp an hour at 66. And you can see I put the valve cover back on there. Could not see the injector spring any damage to it. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna cut to the chase if it's smoking, which it definitely is. And let's see if we can isolate which cylinder's causing that smoke. So what we're gonna do is cut out number four and let's see if that smoke goes away. Remember, if it gets too warm, the smoke's just gonna go away altogether. So, no smoke right now, completely clear. How about we cut it back in? All right, four's on. Look at that, smoke almost immediately comes back on. Let's cut it out and see what happens. Cut out. Goes away, let's cut it back in. 100% number four is our problem here for the smoke. Let's bring it in the shop and work on it. But before that, how about a little destruction of the week? This week's destruction of the week comes from Harley, and this is out of a C10, which is basically the little brother to a C12, same block. And that is part of the crankshaft, and that's where it came from, folks. Crankshaft's broken. Look at the block there. It actually snapped off part of the block. That's one of the main bolts. Look at the plastic deformation on that bolt. That is ridiculous. So needless to say, major repair here, basically new engine. Block is also cracked. Thank you to Harley for sending those pictures. And let's get back to work. So we're in the shop now. It's not fully warmed up. You can see a little bit of smoke. Now it's a lot easier with the shop as a background, not the sky. And you can see it's a whitish smoke, not real good. So first thing I did was pull the valve cover back off. And even though it's warm, I just wanted to see that our overhead was not way off. We are in valve overlap on number three. So number four will be able to check the intake and exhaust valve. And they're loose, they're not tight. Can't get uh, either of the feeler gauges under them. It's also warm, so it probably could do an overhead, but it's not like either one's way out of spec. They're just a little on the tight side. So, to really inspect that injector, we need to remove the overhead, at least over three and four. So that's what I'm doing here, pulling the bolts that hold both the Jake housing and the rocker arms on. And like I said, I, in many videos, I like to do this by hand, not necessarily break them all with an impact. Depends on the condition of the engine though. This one's in pretty good shape for, it's almost at 30,000 hours. Now it's a dump truck, so doesn't have 2 million miles, it has something like 800,000 miles, but that's a lot for a dump truck. But these are really good engines, this is a 6NZ. So just letting some of the oil drain off of the Jakes before I put them on our little parts cart here. And like I said, the Jake bolts hold the rocker arms in also, so we're gonna pull them up. Try not to drop the bridges all over the place, luckily the bridges stayed in place for once. Then what we're gonna do is pull number four injector. Now I'm actually gonna pull, unless I see damage, four and three. Now in the past, I've aired up cylinders to see if they hold air. And is that a good troubleshooting tool? Yes and no. It will show you if it's holding air, but what it won't tell you is really the condition of the cylinder. Best way I've found is swap injectors with a known good cylinder. That way you're doing it under actual combustion conditions. So we're gonna pull, and I don't see anything wrong with number four injector, at least mechanically speaking, like the spring's broken, it is not broken. The O-ring split, the center O-ring, but that's very common. And it probably split from pulling it out. So just looking it over, I don't see anything wrong with it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna swap three and four, but before we do that, we need to reseal them and evac the cylinders, which I'm not gonna show you vacuuming out the cylinders. I've done that in a lot of videos, but just looking in there, see, I don't see anything that's weird. 
So just pulling them out. It does have quite a bit of carbon buildup on the solenoid, but it's a very high mileage or high hour engine. So number three also had a split O-ring, but like I said, that's usually from removing it. So once they're out, you need to get new O-rings for it. Now, luckily I've got probably 50 of these O-ring kits because they always come in rebuilds, even if they give you injectors with new seals. So you always end up with a lot of them. Gonna put new seals on these and then swap them. So four is gonna go in three and three is gonna go in four, which is what we're doing here. There's number three. So that one's gonna go in number four bore. Now remember, I've already evac the cylinders, so there's no fuel or oil in them. So just gonna put that in. Now, do not reuse injector hold down bolts when building engines. Cat recommends you always replace them. But since this is for testing purposes, I'm going to reuse them just because we're gonna run it and whether it needs injectors replaced or it ends up being something wrong with the engine itself, those injector hold down bolts are gonna have to get pulled again. So there's really no point in charging a customer for new bolts when you're really just gonna start it up, do a quick test, and then most likely gonna have to pull them back out. If the customer ends up just wanting to take it without any repair, then I will need to remove the rocker arms again and put new bolts in. But as of right now, we're just gonna put them back in. I do torque them though. I'm gonna run them in with a ratchet first because the specifications to run them in, then loosen them, then torque them twice basically. But since this is for testing purposes, just gonna run them in with a ratchet, then torque them after. Usually torque everything even for testing purposes. Just gives me peace of mind. So we are back together. Valve cover's back on, everything's been checked. I didn't do any overhead adjustment. Just reinstalled everything. We're at 88 degrees, so a little warmer than we were before, but much colder than it was when it was 130, and that's coolant temp. So here we go, hopefully it smokes still. Die. Oh, Quite a bit of smoke. So that's good, and you can really see it with the contrast of the, the building here. So three and four have been swapped. So basically what we're gonna do is cut out three. If the smoke goes away, you know the injector is the problem, because this is the injector out of four, but it's a number three cylinder. Does not seem to have gone away. I'd say it almost looks worse. So we're gonna cut three back in, and then we're gonna cut out four. Now remember, four has number three's injector. So if the smoke goes away, you know it's not the injector, you know it's the cylinder. Look at that, immediately goes away. So let's cut it back in and let's see if the smoke comes back immediately. Cut in. So the smoke comes back immediately. Unfortunately, we're waiting here back from the customer on what they wanna do as far as further diagnosis and repair. Hopefully in the next video, we'll find out deeper. Thanks for watching.